Hey, it's Tuesday at 7.30. You know what that means. We're back live every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So uh, big thanks to everyone who joined me earlier with the uh, unboxing with Hudak Comics and Movies. We had a blast. <laughs> that was going to go on for almost an hour, but it was just great to have him and doing all the unboxings and stuff. So if you guys joined us earlier, big thank you for that. I actually remember to leave uh, Hudak Comics and Movies link in the description below on this video. I'll put it in my previous video because I think I forgot, unfortunately. But uh, we did some unboxings of some packages, we received some mystery stuff. So if you guys hadn't checked that out, uh, please feel free to do so. Um, but man, we had a lot of action this week in the comic book community. I think I left like six or seven links down below. Uh, yesterday, I was on uh, To Slab or Not To. Um, on JD's channel, I left the link for that down below. Uh, we're joined by uh, Tony Sanders, Jeffrey Comic Con Henson, JD, of course, and uh, Economics and Comics. So, I had a lot of fun there. It was about a two and a half hour show. So, uh, a lot of cool stuff being shown off on that show, that's for sure. Uh, last Friday, we had back to back shows there too. I was on, of course, the Comic Core every Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern, because you never know. What's going to happen on the Comic Core? So I left the link down for that below too. And uh, I do want to talk about Comments of Bueller. We're on his live stream. Uh, so it's kind of like a big two part crossover affair, even though Bueller's on our show anyway. So uh, it was awfully nice of him to, you know, open up his channel to the rest of the Comic Core. And uh, we had a really awesome time there. Uh, while we're talking about Bueller, I do want to, once again, I want to give, you know, thoughts and prayers to Bueller. I know he's going through a really tough time right now. Um, so I think he announced. Uh, all the details on his channel. Uh, so if you guys want to check that out, go over there. Um, like I said, I put a link down to uh, Kyle's Bueller's channel below if you guys want to check out. But uh, he's going through a really tough time right now. He had a, a huge personal loss to him. So uh, definitely thoughts and prayers are with Bueller. So uh, definitely, definitely keep him in your thoughts. All right. So you guys know how this works by now. Uh, while we're kind of waiting for people to file in. I talk about the st stuff I actually had a chance to read last week. Uh, first, I do want to give some shout outs to the people in the chat. Uh, we've had Mr. Gretzky9966. He put out an awesome video the other day showing his haul. He's actually <laughs> closing in on like a really huge action comics lot that he has. Like he's actually got like almost all the, you know, bronze on up action comics. So it's very impressive the amount of action comics and Superman books he's accumulated. So. Uh, big shout out to Mr. Gretzky9966. He says, you better slab that Hulk 181. Yeah, ladies, I don't do, <laughs> be honest, I don't do tons of slabbing, but I, I wanted to bring it on to slab or not to last night on uh, JD's channel. And uh, I think I'm I'm probably going to go ahead and slab that uh, once I go to a con and I can drop it off. So I definitely plan on doing that at some point. We also have Mr. White Gloves, Splash Page Comics. Glad you could make it, man. Uh, he's always supporting the channel, so I'm always happy to see Splash Page Comics in the chat. We also have Brian Spaceboy227. How's it going, man? And uh, Comic G Man, he says, What's up, Seawood? And one of the kings of Instagram, Stay Puff, 1983. So glad to see all you guys making it out tonight. Um, so this is actually kind of my pick of the week last week, even though it's not current at all. Around New Year's, just kind of in some downtime. Um, I just have been really wanting to read this Swamp Thing run. Wolf Blitz sold me a really big lot of Swamp Thing books um, that are in good condition. Actually, they're in such nice condition. I've read them digitally on the DC streaming app because they just happen to be on there too. Uh, so I went and visited some friends up in Chicago, and I took my iPad with me. I ended up cranking out like 12 issues of the Alamore Swamp Thing run. So uh, there's a particular one, Abigail Arcane, or she's known at the time Abigail Cable because she's married. Uh, basically, she they think she gets killed, but then luckily she's brought back to life by her husband, Matt Cable. Uh, but unfortunately, her soul cannot be saved along with her body. Uh, so Swap Thing, being the uh, you know green elemental that he is, has to go you know into basically the depths of heaven and hell to find Abigail's soul. So to do that, he has to. He basically runs into the help of the Phantom Stranger, Dead Man, the Spectre. And Etrigan the Demon, and it's just an awesome read. He basically takes all four of them, contributing their separate power sets uh, to get Abigail saved. So I think this is actually the last one I left off on. I'm going to have to pay eight bucks for it, too. <laughs> a 
but uh, just a phenomenal read. I, I've enjoyed every second of the Alamore Swamp Thing run. It's my first time going through it. Uh, so, so far, it definitely lives up to the hype for me. Uh, next up, finally got this read from last, I think it was either last week or two weeks ago. Uh, unfortunately, it's one of those dang $8 Marvel books, but nonetheless, um, Fantastic Four issue 650 slash Fantastic Four issue 5. Uh, basically, the marriage of Ben Grimm to his longtime girlfriend in the books. <laughs> long, 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 long time. Um, so nonetheless, we get cool. It's like, I think if I remember right, it's three stories. Uh, so you basically get a story with Sue Storm and her relationship with Ben Grimm. Sue Rich. I always just like to call her Sue Storm. It rolls off the tongue better. So you get Sue's relationship with Ben as, you know, Ben has to be, you know, has to recruit her to uh, practice his wedding dance. And that's kind of a funny story there because he keeps stepping on these poor women's feet because they're made of rock. Uh, the next one is uh, Johnny Storm and uh, him hosting the bachelor party of Bing Graham. And, of course, you can imagine all the shenanigans that happen there. Uh, but the other cool thing about that story is it's actually drawn by Adam Hughes. If I remember right, was it the uh, – one of the stories is drawn by Mike Allred, too. And that, I think, was the best art in the whole book. I can't remember if it was the first or the last story. The Su it might have been the, the Susan one that was drawn by Mike Allred. That is, I think that was the best art in the book. But Hughes actually brought it with this story, too. And then the last one, you finally get to see the marriage. And everyone's kind of bummed out at Reed because he's just been doing experiments instead of, you know, hosting bachelor parties and being the best man. And, of course, the, for some reason – all the uh, Fantastic Four baddies got to show up. You got Galactus, one eat the world again, and uh, Doom is kind of a Christmas. Christmas, not Christmas. Sorry, Merry Christmas, everybody. Doom is kind of a gift where Ben Grimm's wedding shows up, and he's like, "I will take care of Galactus." Fantastic Four, they're not going to stand back and let that happen. Luckily, Reed was busy the whole time designing a kind of time freezing vortex because he knew something was going to happen. That way he could just drop the vortex and they could finish the actual wedding. So overall, a really fun read there. Wish it wasn't $8, but hey, good read's a good read. I didn't get a chance to read through this one yet. I think I'm kind of done with Fat Girl anyway, the story in the last couple I've read. Just wasn't that into it, to be honest. Plus, I think this is the very last Joshua Middleton cover, and I'm just that's the main reason I've been picking them up at this point, because I like me some Middleton covers. Um, I think they're switching the art germ like every other female DC at this point. Joe might get the first couple, see what those look like, because I know he does good work too. But I've been really partial to this last run of Joshua Middleton stuff. Ever since Batgirl 23, he has just been killing it. So uh, definitely been picking that up. But like I said, my heart's not into the story, so I've been reading too much of it. My last, you know, current, well, even a swap thing wasn't current. It was current to me. The last current read I picked up last week, Detective Comics. Uh, 995 or five issues away from 1000, but feels like they're actually starting a really nice run um, with uh, Peter Tomasi and who else was on there? Oh yeah. Doug Mankey was the artist. That's what I was trying to think. Uh, you have a really good creative team. So I might, this book I think is going to replace Batgirl on my pull list. Um, there's, this is actually a pretty sad book too, because you lose a, Kind of a minor character in the Batman overall lore, uh, but a pretty major character, the Bruce and Alfred, nonetheless. If you guys haven't read the book, uh, I don't want to spoil too much about it. But, yeah, something pretty major happens in this. And uh, Batman, as, as seems to be the trend lately, he's getting pushed over the edge. So kind of him going through the gates of Arkham and getting ready to race. So it's pretty representative of what actually happens in this book. All right, before I get into whole city here, because I have literally stacks of books I need to show, I want to get into the chat because we do have a lot of people popping in and saying hi. We have Jesse from JLS Comics. He says, am I late again? No, you're just in time, Jesse. So thanks, JLS Comics, for making it in. We got Kakar out. What's going on? He says, beers and pizza. <laughs> That's a very good combination. Joe Jenkins is back in the chat, so he joined me earlier in the day. So welcome back, Joe Jenkins. He says, can't wait. For this list, got my pen and paper ready. So, uh, yeah, I guess that way you guys can hold me accountable because I did make the New Year's resolution. I was going to try to buy less online, unless it was on my 2019 list. So I want to make sure I made a good 2019 list. So that was going to be my online shopping until I break that resolution eventually because there's tons of auctions going on um, this week alone. So uh, we'll see what entices me in these auctions this week. I'm going to try to stick to it so far. 
Uh, Splash Page Comics says Walmart sold a Swamp Thing back in Halloween last year. Yeah, I think I actually picked that issue up as like a DC Comics Halloween special. Uh, 100, is it or 80 or 100 page? But I, I actually did swipe a copy of that, luckily. So um, I, I can't remember. Was it Capullo who did the art on that one? I think it was It was a very nice looking book, to say the least. <laughs> Wolf Blitz says, how's it going, Wolf Blitz? He's saying, you haven't finished those yet? Nah, I've been busy, man. But I, I took a good chunk out of reading that whole run. I'm actually, unfortunately, I'm up to the point where I need to find, I think it's issue 35. It wasn't in the lot. And it's not on the DC streaming service. So I need to find issue 35 to continue reading is the main reason I haven't finished them. Uh, and I kind of don't, it, it seems like it's a very, you know, a very good continuity that I'm more made for that book. So I kind of don't want to miss an issue. So that's kind of the only thing stopping me so far. So I need Saga of Swamp Thing 35. We got David from Beyond the Blast Doors back. How's it going, man? Glad you could make it, David. He says, I pre ordered my variants for Detective Comics 1000. Uh, says uh, Gretzky. So I haven't really taken a close look to see what I'm, I'm, I'm going to get the book, but I don't know if I'm just going to get like the A cover or one of the decade variants. So I know they're doing that whole thing again. So uh, if there's a Starenko one, if I remember right, I'll probably just get the Starenko one unless there's like a Frank Miller one, which there probably should be too. So I'll probably end up getting both. But anyway, we got Brett Hess art. He says, what's going on? So glad to see Brett Hess art back in the chat. And then Don Mosser's back. Hey, how's it going, Don Mosser? He says he's a few minutes late. Yeah, no worries, man. And then uh, I think Gretzky, I think Strinko did. Maybe I'm crazy. I could be wrong. <laughs> but I thought Strinko was doing one of the uh, Batman variants, but maybe I'm wrong. All right. So I do have, well, now it's just going to be, I'm going to show my like huge hauls from this last week. And then I'm probably going to do the 2019 list of, hopefully you guys don't mind uh, the format of the show tonight. So I actually, and this is one of the reasons, like, I need to, like, settle down from eBay and getting the comic auctions and stuff. I actually got this package in the mail the other day. And I was just like, I cannot pinpoint what that package is before I even opened it. And uh, I opened it up, and it's these books. And it's, the seller is just like, oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to send these to you. I threw in a couple extras. Uh, just an eBay lot I won. Um, I got it. I think I actually got it and showed it on the show previously, but I didn't realize I was missing two issues out of the lot I won. <laughs> so shame on me for you know buying something on eBay and not like thinking about it at all after I bought it. That's just terrible. So I, I want to get away from that type of stupid crap in 2019. Nonetheless, we got some cool books. <laughs> so um, I got this uh, Wonder Woman issue 199. So it's like this weird old bondage cover. Like these are all like, if I remember, I think I got it just from a, a seller that had maybe like 100 transactions or less. So they didn't have a lot of action on their store. So I got most of these for like around the $5 mark. And they're in really good condition too. Uh, like I said, I've showed the rest of the Wonder Woman books I got previously. I got this issue 201, just a cool, really cool red and orange flame cover. So I thought that looked really nice. And two extras you threw in. Nothing super crazy or special, but nonetheless, nothing this seller had to do. So I just send the package. Uh, I got a Fantastic Four 254. Actually, a really nice copy. I only like one spine tick on that. And then I got Beware, the Claws of the Cat issue three. So I actually don't own any of the... Uh, the Marvel, the cat stuff. So I thought that was really nice. Good quality copy of the book. I actually put it in a Mylar bag already. So I thought that was really cool of the seller. I'm, I'm glad he remembered because I, I had no clue. So shame on me. Uh, but the other eBay lot I was pretty crazy about. This one, I remembered everything that was supposed to come in it. But basically, I, I wanted this like really nice G.I. Joe lot for cheap. And sometimes, like, I, I do a lot of the make and offer stuff to try to get the cheapest, you know, deal possible. If I want one thing, I might find something else I kind of like and then make an offer on that, too. So that's what I kind of did here. There were actually three lots I wanted, but I was a complete moron on the third one. I should have just bought the third one outright because I had an Amazing Spider-Man 252 in it uh, among, like, maybe 20 other books. And it was $75. Oh, and the other two books... Two of the other books in it were the uh, Craven's Last Hunt. So I, the, someone got a steal of a deal on that lot. But, of course, cheap old me, I'm trying to make an offer on that, like, 60 bucks. I should have just bought it for 75 But nonetheless, I had three offers. Two of the three went through. 
So I got this entire stack plus a bunch of GI Joes and that box there for after an eBay coupon of 93 cents a piece. So I, I still won out pretty good. I'm not going to show all of the GI Joes because I've shown them. Like, I think I had a whole video where I just showed like the first 50 GI Joes uh, at one point. Maybe I have it. And if I haven't, maybe I'll make that video because I could be just sitting here all day showing GI Joe books. Uh, but nonetheless, they're all very good quality. And uh, for 93 cents a piece, I got awesome G.I. Joe 21 silent issue first print. And this was one I don't upgrade my books a lot because I, I just don't care most of the time for condition. As long as it has a cover and it's the mold's not going to make people sick, uh, I'm not one to upgrade. But the, the issues of G.I. Joe I had early on, I mean, they were just falling apart because I got them so cheap at my local shop. But this one, I mean, it's, it's just such a nice copy for a G.I. Joe book because a lot of these were owned by, you know, 80s kids like me who, you know, just destroyed their books typically. So, uh, nonetheless, very awesome quality copy of 21. Uh, just a small spine tick there that's color breaking. Beyond that, I think it's a pretty dang good copy of issue 21. And then the other one, I was ecstatic to get a, finally a decent copy. It's He said near mint. I would probably put it at a very fine. It does have a couple color breaks on the side, but nothing too major. Uh, G.I. Joe number one. So the copy of this I had in my collection. It had uh, the centerfold fell out of it as soon as I opened it. The cover was detached. Um, so I love G.I. Joe. I want to make sure I got a good quality copy of this. And for 93 cents, I am definitely not going to complain about the condition of this book. It is, it is nice and clean and very good quality pages, all that good stuff. I went through it. I made sure the centerfold was attached because it is a beefy book for the era it came out in. So very happy to get that for 93 cents overall. And then the other lot, like I said, I probably got 47 more GI Joes. So <laughs> those are the highlights, uh, the two highlights of that lot. I did, this is a character I don't collect too much, but I've always kind of wanted to a little bit because I've, I've heard good things. Um, and I really like the artist who did these books. So I decided to get make an offer on this Moon Knight lot. So I got, once again, overall, the total is 93 cents. I got a, oh, wait a minute. Look, look at that. We got a, a new stand copy of Moon Knight, number one. Build some Kevich action there. We got some issue two. And I do need to rebag these. I apologize. Because, yeah, that tape on the back is gross. Now I'm going to rapid fire through these next few. We got three. We got four. And like I said, I... I'm really looking forward to cracking these open and seeing what the art looks like. Cause I like me some, you know, eighties Sinkevich number six. Oof. Like I said, these bags are a little rough. Number seven. I think these are where the covers start to get pretty good. You got issue number eight, just an awesome cover right there. Number nine. And then I was pretty happy he threw this one in and it, it has a few spine ticks. I mean, they're, they're definitely easy to tell in the, cover there. Woo, look at the waves. Dang. We'll put that in a knee gerber. I'm, I promise you. <laughs> but we got an issue 29. I always thought that was a really cool uh, Bill Sienkiewicz cover. Sorry, I'm covering the cool blood moon part with my hand. So there's that. Got to put that down before I add a tick to it. We got issue 30. And we got issue 31. And well, like I said, it's going to keep going. So I almost might have to try to fill this run too. So we got 32. 33, Morrison Kevich. Crazy cover on issue 34. 35. Fortunately, 36 is not in the lot. But we have 37. Some, uh, oh, I thought those are Freddy Claws for a second. Those are just hands ripping his stuff. Okay. 38. Cool cover on that one, I thought. Some mummy action, I guess. So I said, I don't, honestly, I don't know much about Moon Knight. This is just kind of the third lot. I was trying to barter this big deal of three lots to get everything for dirt cheap. And like I said, luckily I got two of the three, but I got some Mark Spector Moon Knight, Fist of Khonshu Moon Knight, Moon Knight Special Edition. And then we're getting some modern stuff. So I got a good chunk of the, uh, the David Finch Moon Knight run. Unfortunately, there, none of the bloody variants are in this. But we've got issue one, issue number two, 
issue number three. I know everybody loves them some David Finch. Number four. Number five. I know this cover is pretty dang popular. Number six. I think the bloody one's the one that everybody wants, though. Yeah, number six is still pretty cool. And then the last one of the whole run is number seven. So once again, I, I'm, I might have to become a Moon Knight reader in 2019. <laughs> just, just seems to be one of those characters not tons of people talk about. So those are usually the characters I've been drifting to anymore. Like, you know, your Swamp Things and your Animal Mans, your Phantom Strangers. I've really enjoyed the, reading those characters. So hopefully maybe Moon Knight will, you know, kind of fill in that gap as well. But before we get into our next slide, it has been way, way too long since I have checked into the chat. Uh, so we've got, once again, big thanks to the Great Legend Show for joining us. I know he's he's been a trooper sharing my videos. He shared a video earlier today with me and Houdet, comics and movies. So once again, can't thank you enough for doing that, Legend. That's awesome. He's talking about the, the blue painter's tape. It's much easier to peel off the mylar than the scotch tape. Yeah, I would agree. That's why I started. I finally bought a roll of that a few months back. We got double S in the chat. What is going on, double S? So there you go. There's your hand gesture. <laughs> uh, we got Discovery Bay Comics. I believe I left his link below as well. Um, he actually plugged tonight's show on his channel because uh, he's doing like this new feature on his channel where he kind of tries to put together like a TV guide more or less for the community because sometimes it's just difficult to tell when people are going to be on live when. And at least here on Tuesday nights, I try to keep my schedule semi-consistent um, so I thought that was awfully nice of Discovery Bay Comics to reach out and ask if, you know, he could plug the show on his, um, I thought that was awesome. So big shout out to Discovery Bay Comics. Uh, it's kind of ended up being a lot of work for him. It sounds like, so, uh, you know, definitely sub him up and pay respects to Discovery Bay Comics because he's doing a lot of good work with the community right now, even though he just got here. <laughs> so uh, happy to have you. Uh, we got John's Comics with Kids. He goes, another stream, you hey, get out of the slammer. <laughs> I don't know. I, I actually brought water tonight this time. I forgot to do it on JD's stream. So I don't know if I can do my kingpin impression. Maybe toward the end of the hour when my voice is all gravelly. I'll start talking like old Wilson Fisk. So uh, stay tuned for that. <laughs> uh, who, who am I missing here? All right, everyone's just kind of saying hi to each other. We still got Joe Jenkins in the chat. Everybody sub up Joe Jenkins. And we just had uh, Stephen Jewell. He says, let go of that chalupa. Okay. I was talking about Taco Bell, of course. Legends here were talking about Taco Bell. <laughs> so, And then we have All About Comics. He says, hello. Um, once again, I think if I forgot to leave that link, I, I think I, I did remember to leave that link. We're having an auction tomorrow on the All About Comics channel. JP's hosting this again. Should be a pretty stacked lineup uh, in terms of, you know, people auctioning off their books. There's going to be a lot of people there. Sub him up. 9 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. I think he said 8 Central. All about comics. Got to check it out. All right. So the next up, we'll do Half Price Books last. All right. Actually, we'll, we'll do Half Price Books next because why not? I, everyone who watches the channel will know I love me some Half Price Books. It's, it's no secret. Kind of hoping maybe we can work out a sponsorship. <laughs> No, nah, just kidding. That'd be fun. Uh, but I, I do a lot of buy. They spoil me over there with their just goofy prices of like $1, $0.20, cents, $3 for magazines. But nonetheless, we got we got two solid hauls this week from them. Uh, so I'll go. Actually, I'll start with the one I got today because it's not as cool. Because <laughs> I bought them out last week and then went back after I got off work. So uh, we'll save that one for next. Um, I did pay $2 for an issue out uh, of the price gougers that got me for $2. Uh, but I thought it was a nice issue of Daredevil, The Man Without Fear, issue 215. We got some cowboy action in Daredevil. What is going on there? And it's a, uh, <clears throat> wait a minute. It's a new stand. So there you go. New stand. Daredevil, 215. Um, but everything else in this stack here was 20 cents. I actually spagged and boarded right before I started the stream. So for 20 cents, I got a Young Blood number two. I was the first appearance of Prophet or something. I know, I know people are specking on this book for some reason. It's like, yeah, well, I'm not getting for 20 cents. It's basically not even a quarter. Uh, I liked it so much, I bought a second one. So I spent 40 cents on two Young Blood number twos. 
So there you go. And it has like the cards and stuff in there. So there is that. Also, I've been meaning to read this. I may already have an issue buried somewhere. I got it in a 20 cent bin. Uh, but I know uh, a poor man's comics warm me up on Zach Kaplan and some of the books he's done. So I bought a copy of Eclipse number one. I definitely want to check this out. If I like it, I'm probably going to go ahead and see if I can find a trade of it. Uh, but uh, I can't remember the name of the book right this second. That was really good. I think it's Port of Earth, if I remember right. Uh, poor Man's Comics, AOK, Port of Earth, that trade to me. And it was a really solid read. So I figured I'd check out another one of his image books from Zach Kaplan called Eclipse. So I'm looking forward to flipping through that. Uh, I didn't realize this issue was as wrecked as uh, I thought it was. I kind of just, for 20 cents, I had to pick it up for, uh, you know, why not? We got Wildcats, issue one. Oh, what is, oh, what do we got there? We got a new stand copy of Wildcats number one. Unfortunately, it's pretty wrecked. <laughs> like the back cover's coming off, like the back, there's like a rip on the back side right here. And uh, it is ticked off as all can get out. And so it looks like someone like scraped it across the ground right there. Nonetheless, new stand, Wildcats one. You can't beat that for 20 cents. I found an ambush bug number one. Here's a character no one shows off too much. 20 cents, figured why not get an ambush bug number one. I told myself once I saw it, I was like, eh, maybe I'll get that if it's an issue one. It actually was. So now I have a copy of ambush bug. So maybe he'll uh, fill that moon night void of character not too many people actually read and want to talk about and that stuff and then the last 20 center i picked up this week just leave america rebirth issue one uh, i didn't realize ryan otley ever did anything ever for dc so ryan otley did this cover so i kind of had to pick it up because who doesn't like him so I'm ryan otley from invincible and now amazing spider-man fame uh and then <laughs> we're gonna get in some ash cans in a second but the main reason i actually went back today is there was one ash can I didn't buy, which I, I, whoops, my phone's under there. I bought this whole stack of ash cans, which I'll show in a second. But I, I for some reason, I left one there, and I was just like, man, someone's going to buy that, and I'm going to regret not getting it for cheap. I don't even know if it's worth it. It's, who cares if it's worth anything? It's just hilarious sentimental value. We've got a warrior ash can, and oh, my God, look at the ultimate warrior. So, uh, oh, my God. And I think it was like actual, like, Captain America and Spawn are just annihilated at the bottom, so I'm not sure how you get away with... Uh, I'm sure they didn't have the rights to Cap and uh, Spawn, but there you go. You know, Warrior used the powers of destrucity to uh, take out Cap and Spawn. So there you go. Warrior Ashcan number one. So gotta love it. All right. So like I said, I got some ash cans last week uh, when I went to Half Price Books. So you don't see these in the wild too often. Like, I don't think I've, I've been saying on the other live streams I've been on all week because I keep showing these off because they're just so weird to me that, you know, they're collectible, I guess, because most of them were just like free inserts in the back of like Wizard magazines and Heroes Illustrated stuff. Some of them are actually like convention handouts, too, which I'll just go ahead and show them. Um, this may be one of my like best buys I've had at Half Price Books just based on some of the uh, sold auctions I've seen on eBay. I've got Cyberfrog, Amphibionics number one. So I know, you know, with the whole Ethan Van Skyver situation right now and Comics Gate, there I said it. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, Ethan Van Skyver, he's kind of taken off on his own. He's gotten away from the big two. And uh, he's really made like, you know, he had a huge kickstart with Cyberfrog bringing that back. So um, say what you will, but Cyberfrog and Ethan Van Skyver are pretty hot right now. Um, so books like this that were just, you know, ash cans, they're probably very limited release and not too many people even know they exist. Um, I, I've seen a sale on eBay of about $140 just for this one. I don't know if that probably is just a one-off, but I picked this, uh, two pack up for two bucks. I have no idea what Europa and the, uh, pirate twins are, but that also came with it. So there you go. So basically I got this, uh, oh, and I didn't even notice until just right this second. This one's signed by uh, whoever that is right there in gold. So uh, no idea that was signed. So that's even better. Uh, we did. I did see this one was signed by Art Thiebert. Uh, we got black and white ash can number one. This one's actually numbered 421 out of 5,000. So I'm guessing this is probably some sort of convention giveaway or is it the back of like a magazine maybe. Um, 
actually here miss white tell me right here oh it's a dynamic forces okay so actually kind of this one actually came with a certificate of authenticity from dynamic forces so kind of cool uh, i got a vampirella she this one's actually signed by the artist i'm not sure who small is uh but it's that artist there so i got this for two bucks signed 1994 here, I wish I could find more of these, like these uh, older image ash cans. They're like just a single color and they're black and white on the inside. I don't know why I've always just thought these were really cool. Uh, but this is Wildcats Zero ash can. So I always remember like seeing these in Wizard Magazines and they were always speculating on them. I thought they were really cool. And then on the back, it actually came with a Wetworks one that was free from Heroes Illustrated back in, well, I guess it says 1993. So I thought that was really nice there. Uh, I got a Bartman and Radioactive Man from 1994. I believe this was also from Heroes Illustrated. And I think this came with also a Beavis and Butthead from a Wizard, which also came with a Beavis and Butthead trading card. So couldn't pass that one up. It's Simpsons. It's Beavis and Butthead. What's not the love there? I wish they had more Gen 13 ones. I love me some 90s Gen 13 goodness. Uh, but this is Gen 13 Unreal World. I think that's Alex Garner's signature. I did a little bit of research. Uh, but he didn't actually work on this issue. It was Humberto Ramos did the most of the legwork in this issue in his early career. And this was it, uh, numbered uh, 1,638 out of 2,000. So I guess there were only 2,000 of these to begin with. And for two bucks, it also came with the Savage Dragon ash can from Image. I thought that was really cool. I have no idea what Q unit is. There's that. So I think that was a, uh, yeah, Heroes Illustrated handout. And the main reason I got that one is because it came with another Cyber Frog called Cyber Frog Zero, the origin. Um, so once again, just some great 90, mid 90s uh, Ethan Van Skyver goodness there. So, you know, just little weird books you just never see too often. So I couldn't pass them up for the price I got them. So I thought that was really awesome there. Before I keep getting, because I still got more from the same haul. So before I get into continue into the hall, I do want to get back to the chat because you guys have been blowing up. Yeah, hey, I got 24 viewers in here. Thank you guys so much for joining me on a Tuesday night. I appreciate it so much. I believe we had Chad from Comic Core hop in. He says, Legend the champ that runs the camp. Yeah, unfortunately here at Seawooder 19, I'm just the chump that runs the dump. <laughs> and shouts out newsstand for some reason and uh, does Kingpin impressions now, which Maybe we'll, we'll conclude the show with that just to build up to something. And uh, I don't know, somewhere we're talking about me in round two and Taco Bell. Sorry, <laughs> it's having trouble keeping up with the chat tonight. This is like my third live show in 24 hours. <laughs> we still have Kakarot in there, great legend, Comicore. Uh, Joe Jenkins says ambush bug for the win. We got the architect, Sam's Tangled Web. How's it going, man? Glad you could make it back. We got my first subscriber ever. He's back for the second live stream today. Fish Tropic. Glad to have you, man. And we got Chino Comics and more. He says, what's up, peeps? Just saw the, this love event or live event. Uh, so glad you can make it, Chino. That's really cool you're able to make it into the chat. And, uh, oh, man, I'm up against Daniel Bryan on SmackDown right now. I'm definitely have to catch that on the Rewind. And, uh, yeah, you guys are just chatting it out. And uh, hopefully I didn't miss anything important. So we're going to go back to the hall before I get too rambly on the chat. <laughs> so I did have three, four normal comics I bought for, I think, every one of these was a dollar a piece. I figured, why not? I didn't have the A cover for the new Fantastic Four, and it was a $5 book. So I figured, why not get a dollar copy I just happened to find already in an outlet store. So there you go. Now I have a $1 copy of the new Dan Slot Fantastic Four issue one. So I thought that was kind of funny to find there. Couldn't pass up a early X-23 run. So this is X-23 issue four. Uh, this is back when Craig Kyle and Chris Yost, and uh, he, they even had Billy Tan on the title. But I really like the Kyle and Yost stuff for Marvel. They did a phenomenal run on uh, X-Force when they were on it. Um, but, yeah, I, I, that's a pretty solid run in my opinion. Just the earlier Hulk. This is Hulk 357. So I thought that was a really cool-looking, just grim gray Hulk cover there. And then the last one, thinking about the great legend on this one, he's always talking about the Marvel 2-in-1. I found Marvel 2-in-1 issue 4 for a dollar. I don't know if I have issues 2 and 3. I know I have the first issue of this run, 
maybe the second one, but I, I know I've heard nothing but great things about two and one. So I figured why not get another one for a buck? All right. So the tail end of the, this crazy half price books haul. Um, <laughs> I just saw J JP says, Gold on the cyber frog. I'm gonna retire. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> I'm probably just gonna end up keeping it every like I do everything else. <laughs> Someone just really wants some double essays. He's multitasking, watching SmackDown and my live stream. So uh, hopefully I'm slightly more entertaining than Daniel Bryan. I guess even I, I really dig the new Daniel Bryan. It's, it's, he's been doing good stuff on SmackDown. But nonetheless, I said way back when I'm like, maybe it'd be cool to find those Marvel magazines, the Bizarre Adventures one. I found one for like two bucks. It was at a, a thrift store and like a stack of sewing magazines. It was just kind of one was like sticking out the side, you know, like if this is a stack, one was like sitting like this. I'm like, is that Black Widow? <laughs> I pulled it out. Sure enough, it was a Marvel magazine and a stack of just random women's magazines. So I, I flipped through. I thought that was super cool. Um, so I knew when I saw these for three bucks a piece, I, I wasn't going to leave them laying there. So we got Bizarre Adventures issue 30. So there's some really cool art and cover in these things. I need, I, I really need to start getting some magazine size bag and boards too. Speaking of all this, uh, we got a Call of the Barbarian on issue 26 of Bizarre Adventures. And it actually looks like they threw a E. Gerber board in this one for some reason. So that's kind of awesome. <laughs> so I thought that was really nice. And probably my favorite one, I, I thought about actually looking on the old eBay for this uh, issue 27 because I always thought the cover was really cool. And I heard the art inside was really awesome. But we've got a Bizarre Adventures issue 27. Uh, got some awesome X-Men action there. So I always really like that Phoenix cover with Iceman and Nightcrawler. So I, I was extremely happy to find this in the wild for three bucks. So actually, I think I'm going to read this one pretty soon. But yeah, I, like I said, I never see these magazines out in the wild. And that's the, only the second time ever. And luckily, I've bought them up both times. All right. Speaking of antique stores. I also hit up some antique shops last week. So, yeah, you know, like I said, I, I went on vacation. I hit, you know, went out of town a few times. So when I go out of town, I know a few antique shops I want to hit. They have, you know, good vendors. Um, there's one, the guy just throws like $2 on just about everything. He knows his key issues and he separates them and puts them in a glass case. Uh, but if it's like, you know, a little beat up or, if, you know, he kind of doesn't care about it, he just throws it in there for two bucks. So I just went ahead and bought a lot of run fillers for X-Men for $2 a piece because uh, I was saying on my previous live stream with Who That Comics and Movies, I made some lists this year. I'm going to try to stay more focused on filling runs instead of actually buying dollar doubles. Uh, so I got a little mix up here. I don't have them completely sorted or rebagged yet, but I got a uh, issue 258 of Uncanny X-Men. Really cool Wolverine cover there with... Uh, Actually, I'm sorry, that's a Jim Lee cover. That's right. So really cool Jim Lee Wolverine cover there. Holy crap, this needs to be rebagged. <laughs> I'm going to have to wash my hands after handling these ones. Uh, I couldn't leave this one lane. It's pretty dang beat up. I don't even know if the covers. I haven't opened it up yet to see if it's covers attached. But I found a uh, early Bronze Age Aquaman issue 56. I thought that was a really awesome cover. I, I would have kicked myself for leaving this in the bin for two bucks. So definitely had to get that. We got Uncanny 169 for two bucks. Once again, I'm going to have to sanitize my hands after handling these. We got 175. We got issue 180. Like I said, it's kind of nice. I feel like it's the first time in a while I bought some X Men, and I know I'm not going to have doubles. <laughs> 184. Uh, I got an issue 186. I was kind of surprised he had this one for two bucks. I feel like this one goes for a little bit more sometimes, but it is a little bit beat up as you guys can see there. But I got an issue 212 for two bucks, but I've always just really liked that cover uh, with like Wolverine versus Saber 2 with round one. So always thought that was super awesome and really nice. Uh, we got a 224. It's nice Mark Silvestri there with the long shot. 232. The Brood. And then the last one, it's actually Amazing Spider-Man. But I've kind of learned anymore. Like, you see old Spider-Mans for two bucks, you're lucky. You don't leave them in the bins. You just buy them without thinking about it. So, got a, a decent looking copy of issue 150. Um, so, like I said, I, I don't have, I don't collect a ton of old Spider-Man. 
just because the prices on them they're, they're they're not cheap obviously so when i see them for cheap i just buy them up so i was happy with that all right i got one more haul coming up but i want to get back to the chat because i see a couple people joining in uh we got pope service the first uh in the chat how's it going man glad you could make it i think yeah he said uh to jp got that night of the golden sun issue too i know jp was looking for that book that whole run i unfortunately it's so rare right now i'm not taking the time to know too much about it uh because those books just hit the stands and they hit the recent you know the the resale market like instantly so hopefully it, it sounds like it's a really good read so if you want to know more about that, check out All About Comics. <laughs> He'll tell you all about it. All right. Uh, Comic G-Man says goodbyes. So thank you for that, man. Double S says he likes the X-Men covers. Uh, Chino's Comics and more says my favorite time for wrestling was the Stone Cold era. Yeah, obviously. The, the uh, WCW slash Attitude Era slash NWO. You know, the era is just for life. What are you going to do? We got the Slab Dragon, TJ Watson. He is back in the chat. What is going on, TJ? He says he wants the Aquaman and a high grade. Unfortunately, I can give you a low grade book, but that's all I've got, man. But I know TJ, he's going to find a 9-8 candidate in no time on that book. Great Legend says, I was going to wrestling school with my family and dad. And one loan me. Yeah, I mean, if, if someone could take a time machine and give Legend this money loan, he would probably be like, you know, neck and neck with like Paul Heyman in terms of like wrestling managers. So someone invented DeLorean and go pay, you know, young great legend uh, visit so we can get like one of the best wrestling talkers of all time. <laughs> uh, let's see what else you guys are saying. It looks like Chino Comics is wanting in the auction scene. Yeah, hit, hit some of these guys up. Uh, I know, you know, JP all about comics. He's starting to open up the uh, the floodgates a little bit, getting some of the uh, newer people in. I think I was hoping we'd get like a poor man's comics. I think he said he was interested. I think there's one other name. I just can't think about it now. Um, and then, yeah, the great legend, he he's always open up spots. So, yeah, hit some of these guys up if you need to sell some books because there's, there's a lot of good stuff auction-wise going on in the community right now, which speaking of, we'll, we'll go ahead and plug the New York Warriors as well because I think in about – an hour and 15 minutes, they're going to have an auction too. And they always give up. You can get some phenomenal deals from the New York Warriors. I, I mean, I've gotten a lot of books from those guys last year. So take it from me. Check out the New York Warriors, all about comics. Great legend show. They all got good stuff. Hopefully I'm not leaving out anybody there. All right. Who else did we have? I feel like I missed one person, but hopefully I did not. If I missed, just say something, please. <laughs> oh, we got, here he is. Who that comics and movies? He's back. So. Hopefully he's feeling a little bit better. Uh, he, even though he was, you know, having flu symptoms, he still did that almost hour-long video with me. So just a big thanks once again to Hudak Comics and Movies for joining me earlier. Like I said, I'll say it once again. It was just a cool, almost a one-year anniversary for my first video to have him on my channel and do an unboxing together. So, all right. So we'll go ahead and get my last talk because I know you guys are dying to see the 2019 What List. Um, so as you know, Legend gave me some good advice a long time ago. He's like, when you are in danger. You call the Phantom Stranger. So I got a couple Phantom Strangers last week. So I got a Phantom Stranger issue six. And yeah, I put these Phantom Strangers immediately into my lives. So I really been, I need to sit down. I'm, I'm thinking I'm just going to try to collect like maybe the first 10 issues because these say they're not, I mean, they're not the cheapest books in the world. Obviously they're, that's a DC 15 center, but they're pretty affordable. I'm thinking about trying to contact this antique vendor and seeing if he's got the rest of the run. Because I've been getting, a, I'm pretty much every Phantom Stranger I've found has been from him for like three bucks or less. So I got issue number six. We got an issue 16. So this one's one of the uh, the bigger 48 count size books. I thought that just was a crazy cover right there. I'm sorry, I'm not organized too well tonight. I also have an issue eight that should have came in between the two. So real, I just like that shadow of the Phantom Stranger in the back. Just a cool looking book. Just they they killed it on these covers during like this DC horror boom in the 70s. We've got House of Mystery issue 203. Another beautiful looking book. I, and most of the I guess I should have said most of these, I think, with the exception of maybe one Phantom Stranger, probably this issue, I think 
I paid four bucks for everything else in this lot was about I think three bucks if I remember right. So I pretty much paid three bucks for all these uh, early bronzers. So I got that. We got a house mystery one ninety one. And then, like I said, I might have to try to contact this guy because I, I didn't. I've never seen him have any Green Lantern. I finally found he had one Green Lantern from the Silver Age. I, I was collecting these as you know in, in late 2017 as often as i could but it seems like just in 2018 i just had a drought of getting good silver age green lantern so i was trying to really put together this early run because hal jordan he's one of my you know my boys basically i would love to get as many silver age green lanterns as possible and even early bronzes of you know the denny o'neill neil abs which i've actually got a good chunk of those over the last year but these like middle like 20s 30s and 40s for some reason i just and Obviously, anything before that, I just had a lot of trouble getting for decent prices and even just seeing in the wild. So, fortunately, that was the only one he had, so I bought it, hoping he'd bring in more next time I go, maybe a month or two from now. Uh, I found a Beware the Creeper issue, too. This is his only Creeper as well. So, it just, uh, I mean, it's still got some action on the side there. It's been loved, but that was just a nice looking book. It's a beaut on the inside. You could tell it's ever been read. So, I thought that was really nice for three bucks. Um, and then these last two, they're pretty dang beat up, but I try to get me some Doctor Strange when I can. So I got a Strange Tales 142. I'm sorry, I said, yeah, these were uh, both Doctor Strange and Nick Fury. So this is more of a Nick Fury issue based on the cover. Um, unfortunately, the cover is detached. That's why I was able to get this for so cheap. Nonetheless, it's still a cool book to have. And then I also have a Strange Tales 148. So I always like that cover. Uh, and I was happy to see. I think, yeah, I put a note that says the top staples detached. So strange tales were pretty rough, but like I said, people like to charge out the wazoo on these strange tales, unfortunately. So these are a lot of fun to collect as well. All right. So we're getting toward the last segment of the show. Of course, like, hey, we're going to have a, uh, I'm going to talk about my 2019 list. And then, hey, I'm not going to bring up my 2019 list to have ready for you guys. So uh, before I read off the books I'm looking for in 2019, I want to get back to the chat just one more time here to see what is going on. Once again, we have Stephen Jewell in the chat. He's showing some love for Phantom Stranger. Man, I have to read this chat on the rewind. <laughs> Sometimes I got to do that. Uh oh, is somebody depressed in the chat? I hope not. If someone's depressed, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to get back to reading it. So we got Double S says, don't forget the Phenomenal on the Man Out, a great legend, uh, the champ that runs the camp. Pope C says, PayPal question will be the characters. Oh, I don't know what that means. It will be the characters in 2019, Phantom Stranger, Dead Man. I need to do my 2019 list, maybe next week. <laughs> says, uh, who that comics and movies. Yeah, I'm going to keep collecting Phantom Stranger this year as often as I can because I've had a lot of fun in late 2018 getting them. All right, and we still have 21 live viewers. Thank you so much, guys. That is awesome. Like I, I say it once a week, I feel like it's just it always amazes me. You just flip on the switch, more than one person joins. So once again, big thanks, guys. All right, unfortunately, my you guys know me in screen share. I always like to botch it, so I started to do it. I was going to do like I was going to show all 12 issues on comicbookdb.com, and two minutes before I went live, the the they got an SQL error on that website. It's a great website. Sometimes it just easily crashes. So, of course, one minute before I hit play, it crashed. So <laughs> I don't have visuals of the books, unfortunately. I can search for them on eBay. But, you guys, most of these books, you're going to know what they are. So I'm just going to go ahead and read off my top 12. Yeah, I, I couldn't pick just 10 to stick to. I just went ahead and picked 12. Said, screw it. Why not get 12? So I'm going to read off. I guess I'll try to give a little bit of a reason to. So I'm going to read off the 12 books I'm looking for in 2019. And actually, I will say this already. Two of these books should be on the way to my house anytime. I'm looking forward to them. So stay tuned to see which two books I will have. Hopefully, maybe either next live stream or the one after that. So uh, the first one, Strange Adventures 180. So been loving Animal Man all last year. So uh, I read pretty much the entire Grant Morrison run. Uh, waiting for Legend to catch up. Then we're going to do a review of that. Can't wait for that. And I think I'm going to read the uh, the Lemire run as well, just to get caught up on that. 
once again, because I really haven't read it since 2011 when it originally came out. Uh, so I definitely want to make sure I, I get a first appearance of Animal, because right now, like, DC does nothing with Animal Man, period. Like, I don't even know if he's in the book still. I couldn't tell you. Like, I haven't seen him in a book. So the, the collectability of Animal Man stuff, it's probably as low as it'll ever be, because all it takes is, like, DC's like, Oh, we're going to do this awesome Swamp Thing show, and then he'll appear after the credits, and then they'll make the Animal Man show. So I want to make sure I'm on the Animal Man train before they create it, basically, because I love me some Animal Man. He's one of my boys. I, one of my other boys, Booster Gold. You know, I don't have a Booster Gold number one, though, for some reason. So that's also number two on my list. And these are in no particular order. I kind of just made it. So it's not like Strange Adventures 180 is my number one most wanted book. It was just the first one I remember to, to notate, basically. Uh, but Booster Gold, number one, uh, I would love I love me some Dan Jurgens. I love Booster Gold and Skeets. I don't know why I don't own this book already, but I just want to, you know, get it for the right price. All right, so number three, I guess, on my 2019 want list, Doctor Strange, number two from 1974. For some reason, this book has eluded me. As far as I know, I think he just feuds with the Defenders in it. I don't think there's anything key about this issue, but every time I see it at a convention, it is just insanely overpriced for whatever reason. I have no idea. And even trying to get it, say, on eBay or what have you, it's like a at least a minimum $10 or $11 book destroyed. I have no idea why. Uh, but basically, like way back, well, probably been a little over a year now on uh, Lords of the Longbox auction, I bought from the Dark Side Jedi, I got this really nice lot of Frank Bruner, Doctor Strange's for just a heck of a deal. And and, and it, he didn't advertise that the issue two was supposed to come with it. I just mainly wanted the rest of them, but uh, he didn't have an issue two to put in. So I'm like, ah, let's get issue two later. So it's over a year now. I still haven't found an issue two. So I'm st still looking for it. Keeps eluding me. So I'm just like, I'm just going to put it on the list. See what happens. Next up. I got DC Comics Presents 26, the, the first new Teen Titans, basically. Once again, I've been filling all the holes in the new Teen Titans run. I've gotten most of the keys I need to get for the new Teen Titans run. So I'd kind of be goofy and foolish not to put the first parents of the new Teen Titans on the list. Kind of like when I was collecting uh, New Mutants in 2016, 2017. And there's one key that's coming up. You can guess which one that is. But I pretty much had every other key but one, and then the, the magazine size New Mutants, you know, whatever this book's called here. Sorry, there's stuff stacked on top of it. Marvel Graphic Novel, that's it. Marvel Graphic Novel, The New Mutants, First Appearance of the New Mutants. So DC Comics Presents 26 is kind of like that Marvel Graphic Novel for the New Teen Titans. So uh, I do need a copy of that to keep that up. Uh, next up, Superman 233. I wanted to put one key neil adams cover on this list because i love collecting some 70s neil adams you know i ended up putting another one on there anyway i've always just really loved that issue that's the one where he is superman he's breaking the kryptonite chains uh so i've just, i've always wanted that cover so i'm like yeah why not go ahead and put it on that list no one's really looking for it and then like the day i put it on the list i think comic tom put it on one of his videos that you know is a speculative book and it's you know it's it's rising and i'm like oh come on so it could be a little difficult to lock down that book this year uh so we'll see i mean i think besides the cut it's they said it was an interesting story too so i'd like to get issue 234 as well uh but man it'd be cool to at least have that for the cover to begin with I, that's one i'd probably try to put on the wall i've, I've always liked that cover so much speaking of neil adams and even denny o'neill i i this is probably the biggest book I put on here. Uh, but I figured, you know, you got to put one big one on there. So I put Green Lantern, Green Arrow 76. Uh, basically the very first Bronze Age comic book. I know some people debate if it's that one or Conan the Barbarian from Barry Windsor Smith. Uh, but I've gotten most of the rest of that Green Lantern run. I just, 76, is a, it's, a, it's a big book. <laughs> so it goes for quite a bit. It kind of launches that whole run where, you know, you had Neil Adams on the title a lot more. Denny O'Neill is, you know, in his prime, basically firing on all cylinders. So that's definitely a book I want to look for. All right. Let's see what you guys are saying in the chat before I get to the rest of the list. Who Dat was saying, I can't find any more of those dead who books that we were looking at in our unboxings earlier. Yeah. Like I said, I haven't had to, I had to eat dinner. So I haven't had a chance to research any of our 
unboxings from live stream number one of the day. So uh, I'll, I'll let you know if I find anything for sure who that. Uh, great legend saying Pope loves FF. Great stuff. Last book was Just League Unlimited in the New 52 run, and he's showing some love for Animal Man. Yeah, absolutely, man. I cannot wait till you finish that run because that, that whole last act is right up your alley, Legend. You're gonna love it if you if you forget how that whole last part goes. So, I, like I said, I'll just say this: I read it for the second time ever, and I, I liked it better the second time. If that makes any sense. Don Mazur, I think he's talking about the uh, Green Lantern, Green Arrow 76. He says that's a big one. It's on his list as well. And yeah, oh, there's Pope service. Yeah, we, I think we we're talking about, uh, you know, the first appearance of John Stewart. And I think he's just like, give me another one to aim for. I think 76 was the one I told him. Now it's the one I'm trying to get to. So we'll, we'll see between the two of us if we can get a 76 this year. I, I hope at least one of us gets that. And Don Monster also says he, didn't, he doesn't have a booster gold either. Yeah, I absolutely definitely want to get that. All right, so the tail end of my list. Captain America issue 111, just an iconic Jim Starinko cover. Like I said, I wish I had visuals of this stuff. But unfortunately, the website decided to choose one minute before it crashed. So that was, that was nice of them. But I wanted to put one good Neil Adams cover and one good Jim Starinko cover, each from the 70s, uh, that early Bronze Age stuff. And uh, actually, was that sacked? Whatever. It might have been silver. I can't remember right this second. Uh, but I wanted to pick one really nice cover. That's that, like, that's the white one. And he's like holding up the shield over his head. Uh, and there's statues of it and everything. I definitely would like to try to get that eventually. But at least this last year, I got the uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. stuff the, from uh, Storinko. So I was extremely happy to finally capture all of those. I wouldn't mind an upgrade on issue four because uh, the sides on that white cover looked like they got like marshmallow torched. <laughs> so I wouldn't mind getting an upgrade on that one, but I'm not going to like break the bank trying to get one at this point in time. Next up, uh, spoilers if you guys watched the Great Legends auction last Saturday. Uh, the Raphael number one, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle micro series, the first appearance of Casey Jones. Uh, was a pretty big book for me. I wanted to get one big, I've never really thought, for whatever reason, I've never really thought, like, I need to focus on Turtle books. For some reason in my head, like, the first run of Turtles books were always just in my head out of reach. So I'm like, you know what, this year, I'm just going to throw one on there and see what happens. And something happened already. So I guess spoilers coming up. But uh, Raphael, number one, micro series. I'm going to be extremely happy with if I get that one, I guess. Wink, wink, intent. So uh, looking forward to that. Um, I was talking about New Mutants earlier. I had to put New Mutants 87 on here. I know that's kind of like, it's probably not the best time to try to get a copy of that because Deadpool, he was in that movie last year. It was pretty popular last year. It seems like a lot of people at least forgot the movie existed because I haven't heard on a lot of best of lists. Uh, but it's about the only key I'm really missing from that run. I at least got the whole uh, Legion saga, the whole first appearance of that. I got the first appearance of Deadpool for three bucks way back when, so I don't need to worry about that. And I've got the Marvel graphic novel. So really, if I get like an 87, that's really the last book I need to just complete that entire run if I wanted to. I guess if you were in counting issue 100, first appearance of X-Force, I got that one for like a buck. So I do need an 87 to kind of complete the keys in that run. Uh, next up, X-Men 94. Unfortunately, in our mystery boxes, we did not get X-Men 94s, but I threw it on there anyway uh, because it's a book I always want. Actually, I think I originally put on my 2018 list, then I just for whatever reason took it off. Uh, I decided just to throw it back on there this year because honestly, I'd really like a giant size X-Men. But that book, I mean, somehow that has just skyrocketed way past X-Men 94. Uh, so I decided for this year, I'll focus on 94, see if I have any luck with it. And if not, I, maybe I won't get it. Um, going back to our pal, the Phantom Stranger, I put Phantom Stranger number one on this list. Uh, kind of goes back to what I talked about with Animal Man and even really Booster Gold. Not tons of people are really looking for Phantom Stranger stuff right now. So uh, I definitely wanted to make sure that I was on that bandwagon before somebody decided to make a movie, TV show, what have you, and just escalate the value of these early Phantom Strangers books. Those are all just, they're, they're very beautiful books. They look amazing, and they got good stories in them. So I want to make sure Phantom Stranger no one is in my collection soon before something gets announced and it's escalated in price for good, no good reason. 
All right, last one on the 2019 list. And I don't know why it took me so long to remember to put this one on there. That's Runaways number one. <laughs> like, that's a book I've been wanting for like maybe 15 years. And then for some reason, it just, I, I should have put it on my 2018 list, but didn't. Um, but nonetheless, 2019, I just watched the TV show. It was a great new season. I'm just like, why have I not put Runaways number one on my list? Because it doesn't seem like a lot of people really trade that book. Um, not a lot of people really talk about the TV show since it's on Hulu instead of like Netflix or uh, network television. Uh, so that, that's definitely a book I want to get in my collection. It's Runaways 1. I love that story. Uh, you guys know me. I love me some Brian K. Vaughn. <laughs> you know, I talked about why the last man enough on this channel. Um, and then uh, I guess just kind of last, I was also, you know, because this year I wanted to make that, I wanted to put a lot of thought into this this year just because I wanted to challenge myself. The want list, that's all I want to try to buy off online this year, basically. So as you see, I'm like, Moon Knight, like, I love getting this deal, but do I really need this many books every single week? So some people out there would probably say yes, because I got to fill an hour of live streaming every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> so, but nonetheless, I, I it, it's getting too crowded in here, as you guys can kind of tell in the background there. Um, I need to scale back get rid of some stuff I'm just not valuing, I guess, and then maybe just focus on some of these other books. So I know it's a little taboo uh, in January, make a best of uh, 2019 list, but I, I'm putting serious thought into this and that's what I'm really just kind of looking to get. Um, and then previously, like in the last few years, I think, you know, what I pay for books, I think uh, the max last year I had set until a certain uh, first appearance of a Canadian blew my budget out of the water. Um, I usually only limited my purchase to $40 a book maximum. Uh, I'm seriously consider rethinking that this year just to try to achieve some of these because I'll admit it was kind of nice being on JP's All About Comics auction, which linked down below, by the way. It was kind of nice selling something on his auction, getting those PayPal bucks, and then going on the Great Legends auction as a, a you know a bidder and seeing someone put up a book from my list. So... Uh, even though that book technically the way I factored in would have been under that budget technically since I got it for such a good deal. So uh, spoilers for maybe next week or the week after. Uh, but nonetheless, I think I had three I didn't get off my 2018. I had 10 on that list. So that's Amazing Spider-Man 252, Green Lantern number one from the Silver Age, and Chu number one. I'm still going to pursue those books as well because I really would like those books. <laughs> so uh yeah, that's pretty much my want list. I guess technically it's 15 books, if you include the uh, the mist from 2018, because I don't want to ignore that either. So sorry I didn't have pictures to show, uh, but nonetheless, I cannot wait to pursue these books. I already got two coming in the mail. Um, so let's get back to the chat one more time. And since it's after 8.30, we need to wrap this up so we can start to get ready for more live content from the uh, YouTube community tonight. <laughs> Once again, Hudat and I were talking about this theory. It's like I show the books. I'm not complaining. I, I appreciate each and every view. It's amazing to me, but it's just kind of funny. I show a book I feel like the views are down here and I just run my mouth and some other views are up here. So 26 live viewers. That's amazing, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, that is very awesome. We got Midwest Comic Man Paul in the chat. How's it going, Paul? I know he just uh, got a beer today. He was excited. But it's like a Dunkin' Donuts beer. That looks super weird, but extremely tasty, I'm assuming. So uh, that's really awesome. I'm not sure. Unfortunately, I'm not sure what your comic book sees time. We said he had a real old copy of the book, but it's tanned out bad. Yeah, my, it's just probably like my uh, Nick Fury issue four, the Storinko one. He might be talking about the Captain America 111, those Storinko white covers from you know the late 60s, early 70s. Yeah, those tanned out horrible. Uh, we got one of the best sellers in the entire YouTube community. We got Big Bear Comics in the chat saying hello, everyone. One of the, if you guys see Big Bear Comics and Legends Live Auction or, you know, wherever you see him and he's selling something you want, buy it from him. He, he has the best packaging. He's very efficient and the books are always top quality. So glad you can make it in Big Bear Comics. You're one of the best out there. We got Scott Farr. He says, what's up, everyone? Glad you can make it back for another week. Scott Farr, glad to see you in the chat. Uh, let's see what Double S is updating me on uh, SmackDown. Apparently, we got Zelina Vega in the ring. She says she's looking fine and white. LOL. Thanks for the update, Double S. 
Who that comics and movies says top 10 2019 list? Well, top eight since two are down. Yeah, that's a good feeling. Is it? Yeah. Who that just went to a con this week? I think it was Wizard World New Orleans. Um, so glad he made it down there. Sounds like he got a call. I know he showed me a couple things he got. He got some really nice sketches too. So check out his channel and stay tuned to see if he'll show those books off because he had a lot of cool stuff he got. Uh, I did see Pope C. He's posting stuff in all caps at this point. He says, how high would you have gone on that TMNT auction? Uh, do I want to reveal that? <laughs> uh, once he said 80 bucks, I was like, I'm going 80 bucks to get that other book. So, uh, yeah, it was probably getting toward my threshold. But then I remembered the PayPal bucks I had from the JP auction. I probably would have ended up spending a good chunk of those. Uh, let's see who else. We got Joe Jenkins. He says, love the list. He would. Gave me some good titles to look at for this year. Uh, Discovery Bay says he just subbed up Big Barry. Yeah, you, you definitely will not regret that, Discovery Bay. He's got some great content on his channel. Uh, whenever he posts his books, there's some really amazing books. Stephen Jewell says he's got ASM 252 for trade. Yeah, maybe hit me up on Instagram at seawoodard19 and let me know what details you got on that. Because uh, like I said, that's one thing I'm looking for. And uh, other than that, it is 836 now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the live stream. So thank you guys so much for joining me. We'll go ahead and last plugs real quick. Tomorrow, All About Comics, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central. Big auction on his channel. Um, there's going to be, I think, let's see if I memorize the list. I think we got Tacoma Comics, obviously JP. I think Who Dat Comics the Movie said he's going to be there for a little bit. I know he's not feeling the best, but I think he's going to do a couple lots. Uh, Drew Manchu, I think he's going to be a part of that auction. I think we're going to get Gene Polly Peter as a part of that auction. And hopefully I'm not leaving out anybody. And then me, I guess, on top of it. So I going to have like six people uh, to buy books from at least tomorrow. I'm probably forgetting one. I think he said there's a guest spot even open too. So it's going to be a pretty big Google Hangout uh, for the auction tomorrow. So definitely cannot miss that. Uh, let's see. It's, well, tonight, we'll just go ahead and plug in one more time. we got the, the New York Warriors. I think 9.30 is what um, Big Lion Cat told me. He's actually part of that auction tonight, too. Uh, so Big Lion Cat, I know he has a lot of great slabs he sells off. Uh, but the New York Warriors, they have a lot of great deals as well. Uh, so, hey, we're getting two auctions and two nights here. Those are always fun to watch. And, oh, my God, I think I forgot to shout him out again. I'm sorry. We got Jason Smith, Mr. Medium Mailman himself in the chat. I typed it earlier. I think I forgot to say it. But I want to say, Jason Smith, happy to have you in the chat. Jason Smith is awesome. <laughs> I'm so happy he's here. Uh, let's see. So Thursday I'm taking off, but I think Tony Sanders and the Great Legend are doing a show on Thursday. So that'll be my Thursday plan to watch that show. And uh, I don't know if uh, JLS is doing a show this week, but uh, JLS uh, Comics, Jesse, he usually does his show on Thursdays. I know they've been kind of fluctuating the schedule a little bit. And, of course, i got Comics and Cold Winds, 10 p.m. Thursday night, Eastern Time. Uh, and then Friday, we got the Comic Core, 10 p.m. Eastern. You never know what's going to happen on the Comic Core. Scott Farr is asking, what channel and time is auction tomorrow night again? I believe it was 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, if you scroll up, and I actually think I put the link down below. It's All About Comics channel, All About Comics. So sub up, check out All About Comics. Uh, he's going to start to go on a rotational schedule with auctions. So if you guys like the auction scene, you have to subscribe to All About Comics and The Great Legend Show as well and everybody else I mentioned tonight. Uh, but I believe JP said he's going to strive to do the first and third Wednesday of every – or maybe the second fourth. So, sorry. Once you get in these live shows and do like over an hour, your brain starts to go a little bit. But nonetheless, JP is going to do two Wednesday auctions per month on his channel. Uh, and Zachary Family Comics confirmed that. By the way, welcome, Zachary Family Comics. Glad you can make it in at the tail end of the show. Yeah, once again, 10 p.m. Comic Core. Uh, thoughts with Bueller. Uh, definitely, you know, give Comics with Bueller your best. He's going through a tough time right now. He just lost someone pretty close to him. I believe it was a roommate. Um, so check out his channel. Show him some love. So maybe send him a message letting you know you're thinking of him. Uh, but he was nice enough to have the whole Comic Core on his channel last week. Um, <laughs> at least me, I'm not worthy. So, but uh, it was a lot of fun hanging out with him. We, we dressed up just for fun and then undressed up for the comic core. So we had a lot of fun last week. I think the last link I put below once again, besides who that comics movie sub him up too. We had a great live stream earlier doing some unboxings. 
Last night, I was like a two and a half hour live stream on uh, JD's channel. Uh, we had a great time there on To Slab or Not To, where I showed such books as Hulk 181, which I'm probably going to get slabbed eventually, let's be honest. Uh, and a couple weird ones I actually showed off a couple of those books in my haul today, just to, you know, kind of mix it up a little bit. Um, so they had a heck of a crew there. We had, of course, JD, Tony Sanders, Jennifer Comic Con Henson, and Mr. Siak. There you go. I did my one impression of him for today. Economics and comics. It was a lot of fun hanging out with those guys. And even uh, John's Comics with Kids jumped in on the after show chat and we had some fun. Oh, God, I almost forgot. So uh, instead of doing the old Tony Schiavone WCW finish tonight, I, I will, if he's probably not even watching anymore. No one else is watching. Oh, we still got 22. We'll, we'll do it when we're. I don't want to take a drink because I need my voice to be grainy. But I guess last night I was wearing this uh, reddish polo. Uh, the lighting in my room in this camera made it appear orange, and I didn't have a collar. He, I saw this picture they they had going in their chat. It absolutely cracked me up. Real quick, we got Gomez. He says, "What hard? We got Gomez in the chat. Welcome, sir." But anyway. Uh, back to, I guess, John's comics kids thought he looked like uh, Kingpin from the Daredevil Netflix show. So we had this idea we're going to invite him in the after party. And then no one knew like they he, I was privy of his little meme he created there. But I just started whipping out uh, Kingpin impressions just to get a reaction out of him. So to sign off tonight, we'll, we'll go a little bit of uh, weird, goofy Kingpin, even though I don't think there's a single person left from that chat. So there's no context for anyone except for me, myself, and I. Uh, so we're just going to do a little bit of, uh, even though I'm not even in the uh, prison suit anymore, we're just going to do some Kingpin. So, uh, oh, yes, Vanessa, look at this wonderful white painting. It reminds me of a time I beat my father to death with a hammer. And, oh, my God, it is time to end this live stream. So remind me to kill an odd down Matt.